We all make mistakes. You could argue that computers help us make mistakes much faster and more regularly. I want to show you some features from IntelliJ IDEA which have helped me personally recover from some of these mistakes. More importantly, they've stopped me wanting to destroy my computer in frustration. Hello and welcome to the Continuous Delivery Channel. I'm Trisha G. The very first keyboard shortcut that I taught my eldest child when I was showing her how to use the computer is Control Z. I did not teach her Control C or Control V until after I had taught her Control Z. In the various pieces of software she was using, she would sometimes need to get back to a known good state, and knowing the shortcut for undo helped her a lot. I hope most people watching this video already know about Control Z. If you don't, please start using it as soon as possible. In this video, I'm going to show you some more advanced features of IntelliJ IDEA, which can act as a sort of advanced undo, or allow us to get to some known good state after things have gone terribly, terribly wrong. I have five tips I want to cover. Local history, for getting lost changes or lost files back. Using the debugger to go back in time. Clipboard history, which is personally one of my favorite features of IntelliJ IDEA, and I wish all software had it. Reverting our settings when we've made changes which are not working for us. And finally, I'm going to show you an all-round helpful fix this for me please shortcut. There was one feature in particular I wanted to show you which inspired this whole video. Then I asked social media which are the features that you use the most to save you from uncomfortable situations with IntelliJ IDEA. And this feature, local history, was by far the most quoted feature. Let's get to it. So this is local history. I know that you're all using version control, you do small commits, you make small numbers of changes, that you are in control of the situation as you make changes to the code. And I know that local history is not something you're necessarily going to rely on because you're using a more structured version control system for that. However, I know there are times when standard version control is not enough. Either you've accidentally made a whole bunch of changes which you might not have realized you got carried away with, or you accidentally switched branches or did something else where you trashed your entire local changes. This is what local history is for. To get to local history, I usually use find action because that's my favorite keyboard shortcut for finding something if I don't know the, the keyboard shortcut. Uh, you can also use search everywhere, which is pressing shift twice, and then you can type local history. You're wanting show local history for this. So when you press show local history, it will show you the local history for the file that you were just changing. It, as you can see, it has small incremental changes. All of these changes have been made since the last version control commit. So these aren't version control commits. These are small changes that were made. So IntelliJ IDEA was kind of uh, making a note of all the individual changes that I was making as I went along. It even includes things like refactoring. So I can revert to any one of these. I might want to go right back to the beginning, but probably I'll use version control for that. I might say, uh, actually, this is where I really wanted to be. So I'm going to revert this change and all of the other changes here. And then I get back to an earlier version of my file. I can, of course, even use Control Z to undo the undoing of my changes. When I go back to my local history, it will take me back to, to where I was, including all the individual changes I made. And it even includes the reverting of the change. Another very helpful feature of local history is the ability to add labels to it. So if my code is in a place where I want to make a comment about it, like, uh, this code does not work, I can say file, local history, put label, and I can say does not work. Then it will add uh, like a bookmark at this point in the history so I know that this is not the code that I want. Or I can put it works right now, uh, or these are the changes I was making, or this is what I was thinking. So we can use these labels to kind of tag the, the history as we go through it. Where local history has been really helpful for me in the past is being able to retrieve files that I've deleted that I did not mean to delete. 
I usually do that by looking at local history on the project window. So you can say local history here. In show history, you can see this file was deleted. So I can see where it is and what the path is. So I might want to revert that change, put that back into Git, and I've got that file back. Before I move on to our next set of features, I do want to take a second to thank our sponsors, Equal Experts, Transfic, Tuple, and Honeycomb. Equal Experts is a consultancy that's built on applying the ideas that we talk about here to build great software. Transfic is a financial technology company that applies advanced CI techniques to deliver low latency routing technology. Tuple builds software that helps people pair program remotely. Honeycomb helps engineering teams understand their production systems through observability. Do take a look at the links in the description below. These products and services are well aligned with what we talk about on this channel. Let's talk about the debugger. IntelliJ Ideas debugger is ridiculously powerful, and even people who use it regularly don't use even a, a third of the features, don't even use 5% of the features. I'm not going to go into the details of all these esoteric debugger features. I'm just going to show you one thing which you did not know existed, which is going to save your bacon when you're debugging an application. So let's run the debugger. And usually when you're debugging something, you'll hit the breakpoint a few times and you'll just skip over that as you do. And then maybe what you might do is step over. And then as you're stepping over it, you're like, oh no, I really, I wanted to step into that thing. And I want to be able to go back in time. What you often end up doing is just restarting the whole debugging context, but you don't need to. Look for this tiny little icon here called reset frame. So you're in this method, which was called by this method. And so what you can do is if you reset the frame, it takes you back in time to this method call from before you skipped over the breakpoint. So you can run it back to the start of the breakpoint and then you can step over and then you can step into like you wanted to. And then you can have a look at the internals of the method that you wanted to step into. So that's my top tip for helping with the debugger. You can look for this little reset frame icon, which will allow you to jump back in time to the previous method call. My next tip is less about recovering from mistakes and more about the ability to reuse things that you thought were lost. This is about clipboard history. In IntelliJ IDEA, it records a history of all the things you've ever copied or cut in the past, not just the last thing that's on the clipboard. So you can use Command, Shift and V and it shows you everything that you've copied in this session of IntelliJ IDEA. It doesn't take stuff from outside, from the operating system or from other applications. It does take everything that you've used inside IntelliJ IDEA. So if a few copies ago you happened to copy the version of Gradle and you need that now, you can just scroll down to that or press the number four to paste that specific thing from your clipboard history. Now I want to talk about when you change some settings and uh, the IDE is not behaving the way that you kind of expect it to. So let me show you a few tips for undoing some changes. Firstly, when you open up your settings window, you'll find the things that you've changed in, for example, this is in the inspections, are in blue. So you can see this is different from the default. So I might want to go back and undo that. Any changes that I do make, if I decide that I don't want to keep them, I mean, obviously I can press cancel, or I can revert the changes that are specifically on this page of the settings. Because maybe I might want to go to, I don't know, font, change the font, and, uh, and decide, well, oh wait, I don't, want to, I don't want to keep that change. I do want to keep the inspections changes, so I'll revert this change, but we can see the inspections changes are still there. Something else that's, in, that's useful is the ability to go backwards and forwards through the changes that we've made. And one more thing around settings, let's say that we can't just go back and revert one thing or cancel this thing, we actually just want to reset all of the changes across the board, we've clearly done something very wrong, then we're going to go to File, Manage IDE Settings, Restore Default Settings, although first you might want to back up and sync, but after that you want to restore default settings and then you can restore to all the default settings and restart. I quite often do this anyway, especially because over time, the defaults in IntelliJ IDEA change, and sometimes I want to try out whatever the most recent set of defaults are in case they're kind of more sensible. So it's kind of, 
interesting to do this anyway. But if you have a highly customized IntelliJ idea, you might not want to do this. Finally, I want to show you a keyboard shortcut. I hope that you all know if you're using IntelliJ IDEA, but what I'm going to show you is perhaps even more places to use it. So the keyboard shortcut is Alt and Enter, which I expect you probably use in a whole bunch of places. For example, if you see gray like this, you press Alt and Enter and it tells you you can delete that, nothing's using it. If you see a warning, then you can use Alt and Enter to get it to fix the code for you. It's a really helpful shortcut just to try and get IntelliJ IDEA to reshape the code the way that you want it, or at least maybe try and fix some errors or warnings that you're seeing. What's probably most interesting, I think, for Alt and Enter is that you can use it even when there isn't an error. So in this example, we have completely fine working code. We have no gray things here. We have no yellow warnings. We have no squiggly underlines, but we can still press Alt and Enter here and get a whole bunch of options on how to change the code. So I could collapse it to a stream if I want to, or I can also usually with the Alt and Enter uh, intentions, I can go back the other way. You have a preview of what it's gonna look like as well. So if I do that, then it will replace it back to where it was with the for loop. So Alt and Enter is my magic fix all uh, keyboard shortcut for if I'm looking at some code, I'm not really sure what's wrong, it might be an error or it might just look weird, then I might want to use Alt and Enter just to say, what can I do with this code here? There are loads of features in IntelliJ IDEA which are helpful under different circumstances. I find that when I've dug myself into a deep and nasty hole, IntelliJ IDEA can help me climb out of it. It's not just these five features that I've shown you today. When I asked social media for people's favorite features for getting them out of trouble, I got loads of different suggestions. So play with these features that I've shown you, play with some of the other features that are mentioned, but also have a quick look around YouTube or social media for other examples of helpful features. Because it's not just about using Control C, Control V and Control Z in order to copy, paste and undo. Thanks for watching. Thanks also to our patrons who support this channel and get extras from being part of our Patreon community. If you're interested in being part of our community, check out the links in the description below.